Hi, this is Nalita V, and you're watching V VIP. I always like to say that I could kick before I could walk. My dad is a world champion martial artist, part of the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. He did Power Rangers, Beetleborgs, all these really cool stuff. Um, so growing up, he, he taught me that before I could even walk. I would like to say my inspiration growing up is my father. Um, if he wasn't my father, if you go around asking people about him, he sounds like a myth or a legend because all the stuff that he could do, he's just so, uh, or was so physically gifted with everything. Um, so he was my hero and I always wanted to be like him. And even now to this day, I strive to be just as good as him. So my background in martial arts is actually pretty extensive. I do several styles. I grew up doing Filipino martial arts, which is 90% of weapons. So you can call me like a little human ninja. <laughs> and then JKD, which is Jeet Kune Do, uh, Bruce Lee style, Muay Thai, uh, a mixture of grappling, Penjaxi Lat, Northern Shaolin, Wushu, Taekwondo. Um, and then also now I'm making my premiere in boxing coming up. I like to say that I've kept a great balance throughout my life. Because I grew up in a, a gym, a martial arts school, and that sort of family, I was always aware of what uh, being healthy was. I found what has worked for my body, and that's what I like to tell a lot of people. There's no magic formula. There's no one set thing that works for every single person. So I found what has worked for me and have found a nice little even balance. So I do enjoy food. I love flavors. I eat quite a lot, but I know how to balance that out on the days that, hey, you need to cut back or you know train a little bit harder this day. So dancing came a part of my life at the uh, same time as martial arts. So my dad is a martial artist. My mom did martial arts growing up, but my dad also helped to teach her. My mom was a dancer. She always wanted to be a dancer. So being a kid, my mom would turn off all the lights in the house. We'd get out in the living room, pump the music really loud and have our own little disco in the middle of our living room. And that's where I first came into the love and, and learning about dance. And uh, from there, I was actually a closeted dancer. My family did not know I could dance until I was around maybe like 19 years old. So I would go out and I would learn and I would see things and uh, practice. And around 19, some I just decided to bust it out and they were very surprised. But uh, since then, I love it. You'll, you'll find me. If there's ever any video you see of me online, it's probably me dancing or eating or kicking. One of those three, <laughs> dancing, eating, or kicking. <laughs> I mean, I guess freestyling hip hop. If you see me now, I do a lot of hip hop styles, but I did grow up as a classical ballerina. So I can get in there with my little pirouettes, my arabesque, but I really like, you know, street styles. I like hip hop. Um, also too, because I love the music and the genre. I grew up in that that 90s era and I grew up in America where like hip hop is kind of like the, the the motherland of that. So there's no way I couldn't love it. So you'll, you'll find me there like, oh, it's getting down real hard and tough. And then I bust a little arabesque. <laughs> I can't drop every name of the people that I that I have trained, but um, I would say this. I remember just setting out a goal for myself at one point in time in life. I said, you know what? I want to train celebrities. I don't know why, but I, I said that. And one of my first clients that I ever had was uh, Becky G. So he, she is like an amazing, huge, talented uh, pop star, Latina from Los Angeles, a, a Mexican girl. And um, she was signed under Sony Records at the time. And I happened to meet one of the biggest, biggest producers at the time, um, Dr. Luke. And Dr. Luke and I hit it off and he was the one who connected me to Becky G. And from Becky G, I got Sophia Black and I've trained people like Karichi Tran and um, American football players. So quite a, a lot of people. Um, but yes, I always have really great relationships. There's a, there's a ton more, but I, I can't name everybody. Social media is, I think, quintessential for anybody, no matter what industry that you're in, but it definitely has, I want to say, propelled me in a way where I'm able to reach so many more people than I ever thought I would, um, especially when I moved to Dubai. I really wasn't sure. I came here as a freelancer and I wasn't sure how things would go for myself, uh, but I said, you know what? I want to go out there. I'm going to put what I do out there and, and share authentically with the world, which is one thing that I, I think sets me apart from a lot of other people. Instead of just doing what's trendy or what's out there, I'm authentically myself and I share all those elements. Uh, but from there, honestly, I I was booked like crazy. I have people writing me from all over the world. I, I literally, this is a crazy story. I had one person travel 
for one day from America all the way to Dubai just to train with me for one day and flew all the way back. And those are things that I would have never had without social media. You know, that sort of reach or people being able to see me or there's a random times I'll travel other places and people are like, oh, you're the martial arts girl. You're an elite. And I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I'm, I'm, yeah, I just don't know what to say about it. But social media has been one of my hugest and uh, most successful things that I've done. Five tips that I have for training in martial arts. Just, I, I mean, I can name a lot, but the first one is, uh, I would say empty your cup. That's something my dad always taught me. That's something of, of Bruce Lee's philosophy. That means that no matter what your background is, no matter what you know, empty your cup and be willing to learn. I think with anything, but especially with martial arts, um, you can come in with any type of preconceived notion, but you have to be willing to, to learn and be critiqued on things. So that will be number one. Uh, number two, allow yourself to make mistakes because I promise you when I start coaching people or I teach them martial arts, by the end of it, they don't know their right hand from their left hand. It's so confusing because there's a lot of different elements that you never realize that you have to have control over with your body. Uh, number three would be practice, practice and practice. Even when you feel like you've gotten to a great place, I will always go back to the basics. I've trained literally my entire life, almost like 34 years of training. And I always start my workouts out with going through the basics. Um, number four would be stretch, do your conditioning, all the little simple things that go outside of the martial arts. And then number five is don't be afraid. <laughs> Take chances and have belief in yourself.